Hegel's dialectic of master and slave, inspired many 19th and 20th century philosophers, including Karl Marx. Hegel's dialectic of master and slave unfolds when two humans become conscious of each other. Each imagines itself to be absolute and engages in a struggle to the death to force the other to accept their superiority. Like two-year-old children fighting over a toy, each is prepared to stake everything, including death, in order to confirm their superiority. When the struggle to the death actually ends in the death of one or both of the participants, spirit, consciousness, and society all vanish. Spirit, consciousness, and society survive the struggle only if one of the combatants gives way. Imagine that the two of us, man and woman, are locked in a struggle to the death, each unleashing our violent, destructive energy on each other. Imagine that I have just obtained the upper hand in the struggle. I am about to deliver the final, crushing blow to exterminate my opponent. Recognizing that I will die if I do not yield, I signal to the other that I will yield and submit. Death or servitude. Extermination or slavery. That is the choice I offer to the other. So, I accept the domination of the master, and my own low status as slave. Spirit is no longer absolute, but split or doubled into master and slave. To confirm my spirit, or self-consciousness, of master, I look into the mirror of the slave. My spirit, the spirit or consciousness of the slave, animates my behavior with humiliation, subordination, and abject servitude toward the master. My slave spirit reflects back upon the other, confirming or recognizing the master's spirit. My self-consciousness as master is given consistency, literally made possible, by the humiliation and subordination of the slave. The master appears on the surface to be all-powerful. But, the master's identity is actually quite fragile, for it is entirely dependent upon my behavior. Should the slave fail to recognize the master's domination, the spirit of the master loses its consistency and disintegrates. The master prevents this dissolution of identity by force. The slave is forced to serve the master, to do the master's work. The only way to sustain the master's self-consciousness is for the master to cease working. The slave proves the master's domination through work. The master's spirit or self-consciousness is unstable and fragile since it depends upon the recognition of another, dash dash the slave. So. There is a double movement between master and slave. On the psychological level, the master and slave mutually recognize and sustain each other's spirit double. But there is a second economic movement underway as well. The slave's work sustains the master's biological sack of organs, as well as the master's identity. The slave's consciousness has two bases of consistency, the master's recognition and the slave's own work. Because of this double grounding, the slave's spirit is less fragile and more stable than the spirit of the master. In a virtuoso demonstration of the dialectical nature of reality, Heigel explains that the internal contradictions of this relationship generate a dynamic movement that leads to its negation. Over time, the slave gets stronger, both psychologically and economically. The slave is no longer dependent upon the master for recognition. The slave can recognize him or herself in the products of work and in the esteem of other workers. Over time, the master weakens, both psychologically and economically. Unable to work, unable to produce, the master becomes entirely dependent upon the slave for both economic support as well as psychological recognition. You can see where this is heading, revolution. While dominated by the master, the slave's consciousness was given consistency by the master's desire. Slave morality is that of a servant, a good person, or at least a good slave, seeks to be an instrument of the master's desire. Slave morality commands, be humble. Serve the Lord. Worship the Lord. Obey your superiors. Do as you are commanded. The master's morality commands, be proud, 
Be strong. Pursue your desires. Force obedience from others. Enforce the law. At the moment of revolution, the weakness of the master is revealed. Usually, this occurs when the master's commands are disobeyed by the slave and the master is shown to be powerless to enforce obedience. The gun of the master, though pointed at the slave, is shown to be without ammunition. And so, the slave rises against the master. Violence ensues. The strong ex-slave defeats the weak ex-master. Death or servitude. Extermination or slavery. That is the choice the ex-slave offers to the ex-master. With this revolution of social power, the master-slave dialectic continues anew. History is the record of the dialectical development of the relationship between dominator and dominated. Early turns of the wheel maintained slavery, in which masters had almost total domination, while slaves were almost entirely abject. Later, turns of the wheel decreased the differences between ruler and ruled with the development of feudalism. In feudalism, the aristocrats have far more extensive rights than serfs, but customary rights and privileges constrain them. While slaves were dominated absolutely by masters, Serfs were ruled by feudal lords whose power was limited by custom. More recent turns of the wheel have further reduced differences between dominators and the dominated. Under capitalism, capitalists and workers are formally equal under the law. Capitalists and workers are formally subject to the same set of laws. They enter into employment contracts as formal equals. Hegel's book of lecture notes, entitled The Philosophy of Right, Fuse capitalist civil society as spirit with greater self-awareness, self-determination and capacity for self-development than other systems. Karl Marx begins his analysis of capitalism with a critique of Hegel's philosophy of right. Marx contends that the formal freedom of capitalism, that emphasizes equality under the law, Musk's economic and psychological domination in modern times. While every slave knew that they were dominated by a master who controlled them and lived off of their labor, modern workers remain largely unaware that they are dominated by capitalists who control them and live off of their labor. Welcome to the starting point of Karl Marx's Sociology of Capitalism.